Things are getting really bad in China, and I'm talking about way worse than they were before. Pretty much every metric or thing that you could consider as being important to China's future is on a very steep downturn. Things are getting so bad, they're actually putting in cameras into the bathrooms to monitor people's break times to see how long they're wasting on the toilet. That's actually not the reason things are getting bad, but that is pretty bad. Let's be totally honest. That's disgusting. How are people allowing that? To be fair, though, unless you have a green OK on your COVID tracking app that says that you don't have the virus, then you're not going to get into the bathroom anyway. Anyway, I promise this video isn't about toilets. No, something is happening that I really actually didn't foresee happening this quickly. People in China are losing faith in the government. It turns out that there's only so much propaganda that can cover things up. Look, I don't base my video ideas on anecdotal evidence, but something has been happening that has shocked me. Every single day when I open up my social media, I am getting apology letters through private messages. Like a lot of them from people that were either critical of my work in the past because they wanted to protect their lifestyle in China or even fierce nationalists that are going out of their way to ask me how they can leave or even if I could hire them. <laughs> I'm not joking. Let's not beat around the bush, guys. The Chinese economy is heading towards disaster. The housing market is on its way to a full collapse. And keep in mind, that's a major chunk of China's economy, around 30% for God's sakes. What country bases 30% of their country on Ponzi scheme real estate? Well, China does. There's also a massive drought that's affecting a ton of the country. A lot of people are actually losing all of their money to banks that got involved in fraudulent government-run Ponzi schemes. But you know what the worst part is? It's something that people stopped talking about. And I'm talking about kind of the media around the world. And that's China's zero COVID policy. I think it really fell out of favor with the news cycle because the rest of the world, frankly, doesn't give a shit about COVID anymore. And why would they? When it was horrifically deadly in the beginning, yes, people were rightfully taking it seriously, myself included. But the truth of the matter is, is that it's just not that bad anymore. It's morphed into a very livable virus where people can get on. People can take a much needed break and get on with their normal lives for the most part. However, China is treating it like it's somehow the fall of mankind. 127 million people in China are right now affected by some sort of lockdown. That accounts for 35% of China's GDP that you've kind of effectively just turned off. Unemployment has skyrocketed. 21 million young people in China are without jobs. And that isn't even counting rural China. And let's be honest, that is a massive portion of the country. People are starving. Yeah, it's getting less attention because it's not happening in Shanghai anymore. No, it's happening in places where people don't want to talk about, like Xinjiang in Western China. Places where it's nearly impossible to get information from because of the surveillance state apparatus that China has created. They've made it nearly impossible for any Uyghur minority people to get information out of China. People are trying to escape. People are dying. They need medicine. They need supplies. Children and elderly die of illness because the lockdowns don't allow anyone in or out, and no one can do anything to help them. In fact, I'd hazard a guess that the Chinese government actually likes this. After all, it's the same government that put millions of Uyghurs into concentration camps and currently do so. But zero COVID affects everyone in China. It's insane. It's 
actually insane. People have been reduced to a QR code. And China has paralyzed its own growth and future because of a ridiculous, stubborn policy that doesn't work. So why? Why? The government can't stop this insane policy because the top-down leadership in China has decided that this isn't just about COVID anymore. No, this is about control. How fantastically convenient is it for a country like China, who is already getting ready for stagnation and slowdown in the future, to be given this blessing of ultimate control over its populace? To already have all the measures in place to completely close their population so they can get ready to completely close off to the rest of the world. Every single person in the entire country is tracked, monitored, told what they can and cannot do, and it's all under the guise of Zero COVID and the Zero COVID app, which gives you a QR code that tells you where you can go and tracks your every movement. Everyone talks about the social credit system, which I've covered in detail. This has done way more damage than the social credit system. The zero COVID policies and lockdowns make it so that people are followed every step of their lives. It's completely transformed 1.4 billion people into data that can be manipulated and shut down at any moment. All of this comes just in time for Xi Jinping's third term. The internal party meeting that decides if he gets another term as emperor is just around the corner. Now he's already surrounded himself with yes men and purged all the people that would be against him, but there's still a risk at the top that his policies were too crazy and put China on a dark path. The thing is, this zero COVID policy that he came up with to control the population cannot be seen as a failure when this emperor desires the throne so badly. So why am I shocked? I'm seeing the foundation shake for the first time. I've always said that no matter what horrific things happen in China, the government has ultimate control over the people. It's been set up like that. The people have been brainwashed to believe that the Chinese government is their savior and that their identity is completely tied to that. But let's be honest, that's a very fragile foundation. Nationalism and xenophobia can only get you so far. You need to at least allow people to have some sort of life or be able to make money to put up with this sort of control. But even that's going away. This policy is destroying the economy. So how do you get the people to follow the party when the party doesn't give you anything or allow you anything? No, the reason that I'm making the claim that China's authoritarianism will not allow society to overthrow it is simply because China has full control over its people. Every action is monitored. Every step, every message, every contact. How can a populace unite to overthrow tyranny when they're that controlled? The answer is they can't. But guess what? The people are not happy. It's the first time I am seeing Chinese people previously in support of the government reach out in desperation for methods on how to leave. It's the first time I've seen Chinese people's consumer confidence hit an all-time low. Before, it could only go up. Now, it's going down. It's the first time I've seen apathy turn into action. And that action is getting the hell out of China. The state has control, but its ideals and its sway are becoming fragile because it simply can't deliver on any promise it's made. However, the most important thing to remember is when people allow their government full control like this or promote authoritarian ideals through populism to the point of allowing them ultimate power, 
At that point, it's too late. There's no prize. Let me tell you something. The beautiful facade of authoritarianism, no matter where you are, who you are, it all vanishes when you realize that the people at the top of these regimes always get their way, no matter what. China has a rigid police state that is getting closer to a North Korean level of authoritarianism every single day. Yet I have to ask, what is the trade-off? Why would someone allow the government to have this much control? Surely they get something in return. Sure, the idea is that the guys at the top get to lead and we as the people won't criticize the government and in return get a host of awesome benefits, right? No. You think China has social programs for their citizens? They don't. They make the US look like a socialist paradise in comparison for all of the luxurious government benefits that Americans get in comparison to Chinese people. Pretty rich coming from a communist country. So what do Chinese people get in return for their modern day political slavery? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nothing but economic downturn, police state surveillance, and no more promise for a better future. Think about that when you're tempted by populism or ideals that would put people in power with ultimate control. Think about it very, very hard.